Hello, in this video uh, we're looking at the anatomy of the thorax and we will look at fractures as well as nerve blocks, so more from a clinical aspect. So here is the anterior view of the thorax. This here is known as the superior thoracic aperture and many important structures pass through here. Um, the superior thoracic aperture is a small passage for structures from the thorax to the head, neck and upper limbs. The boundaries of the superior thoracic aperture is anteriorly the manubrium, posteriorly the, um, the vertebra T1, laterally the first pair of ribs and their costal cartilages. So that was the superior thoracic aperture. Then we have the inferior thoracic aperture. The inferior thoracic aperture provides a point to which the diaphragm attaches. Some important structures pass through the diaphragm and this, uh, these are the inferior vena cava at T8, the esophagus at T10, and the abdominal aorta at T12. The boundaries, anteriorly is the, is the ziphi sternum, anterolaterally is the costal cartilages of ribs 7 to 10, posteriorly is the vertebra T12, and posterior laterally is the ribs 11 and 12. So I hope those made sense. So that was the superior thoracic aperture and the inferior thoracic aperture. Now, now let's look at thoracic cage uh, injuries. Now the middle ribs are commonly fractured. Fractures usually results from blows of crush injuries. So let's look at some types of fractures. And these can be things such as a costovertebral uh, dislocation here a transverse rib fracture, an oblique rib fracture, an overriding rib fracture, so, you know, goes over, chondral fracture within the uh, cartilage, costochondral separation, you know, the separation between the cartilage and the bone, uh, chondrosternal separation, chondrosternal separation, so that's uh, sternal involvement, as well as a sternal fracture, and this is right in the center of the sternum. So those were some types of uh, thoracic cage injuries. Now let us look a bit more about what, some, what are some uh, arteries, nerves, and veins that you know, go through here and supply these, uh, the ribs, essentially. So here we have the anterior view of the thorax. Let's cut through here, cross section, and look at what important structures we can find. So here we have, you know, we're looking superiorly on the slice we just cut. And here we can find the thoracic aorta, which uh, gives, um, gives off arteries to supply the thoracic region, essentially the ribs and stuff. So um, this particular artery here coming off is the posterior intercostal arteries. So the posterior intercostal artery comes off the um, thoracic aorta. C coming around this area, we also have the internal thoracic artery, which is a branch of the subclavian. But essentially, the internal thoracic artery gives off the anterior intercostal artery. So the anterior intercostal artery and the posterior intercostal artery will anastomose, and these guys will supply the ribs, essentially, as well as the parietal pleura, which surrounds, um, which sort of surrounds the lung. So those were the arteries. Let's look at the nerves now. So the nerves, you know, it comes, it comes off the sympathetic chain here. We have the dorsal rami and the ventral rami. Um, and these guys essentially form your intercostal nerves. And your intercostal nerves are important because this is how we perform a nerve block, which we'll talk about later. Okay, now let's take another cross section over here and why we're taking cross-section is because we want to see where these intercostal nerves, arteries, and veins actually pass through in respect to the ribs. So here we have one rib, and here we have, an, we have another second rib below it. Um, now, actually, uh, there are muscles attaching to the ribs, and these muscles are important in respiration. So let's l just look at the muscles. The most outside muscle um, that attaches to the ribs are the external intercostals. And um, the second uh, layer of muscle is the internal intercostals. 
And then we have another one called the innermost intercostals. Now, the nerve artery vein, which make up the neurovascular bundle, are actually found below each rib. So just under the ribs. And so all here, these are all the intercostals neurovascular bundle. And we can remember it um, as van. And this is the order we find it in. So we have vein right below the rib, then we have the artery, then we have the nerve. So the nerve is the most, I guess, unprotected out of the lot because it's the most exposed. So again, we have the intercostal vein below the rib, then, uh, uh, then right after the intercostal vein, we have the intercostal artery and then the intercostal nerve. And these um, three are found between the inter internal intercostal and the innermost intercostal. So another layer, which is under the innermost um, intercostal, is the parietal layer of the lung. And then the other layer is the vis visceral layer of the lung. In between the parietal layer and the visceral layer, we have the um, pleural a cavity essentially. Anyway, it's important to know about the intercostal nerve because the intercostal nerve is sensory. It can sense pain when there's pain involvement, when, you know, when the ribs are fractured, for example. And also, it innervates the parietal layer. So if we have some pain within the pleural cavity, it can cause pain as well. So that is why the intercostal nerve is important. So Going back to the rib fractures, remember all these rib fractures we we're talking about? Well, they are very painful because they're and they're very painful because the intercostal nerves are sending pain signals to the brain. So that is why in the treatment for rib fractures, we actually block the intercostal nerves. So rib fractures are very painful due to the expansion of rib cage during breathing. And so we may require an intercostal nerve block. So Again, let's go back to that similar diagram. We have the ribs here. Now, let's just go one step further and look at the most, most outer layer, which is the skin. Below the skin is the subcutaneous fat. And then below the subcutaneous fat, that can be another muscle layer. It can be the serratus anterior, depending on where, uh, which region of the thorax is involved. And then essentially, and then you have the muscles of the ribs, which are your, remember, external intercostal, internal intercostal, and innermost. And then between the internal intercostal and innermost intercostal is your neurovascular bundle. So the point of the intercostal nerve block is to essentially put a needle um, around this area to essentially block the nerve so that we don't feel pain. So it is important to know what order the, 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 the neurovascular bundle is in. And remember, it's van from the bottom of the rib. It's vein artery nerve. And it's important because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to um, hit the artery of the vein because then the person can bleed out from within. So we don't want that. So that is why uh, in the intercostal nerve block, we find the lower margin of the rib, of that particular rib, uh, we find it, we insert the needle inside, that's step one. And then just before, you know, when we find the lower margin, then we tilt it slightly down. And that, mean, and that way we will definitely know that we are uh, targeting the nerve most likely. And then we inject the anesthetic. And essentially this way we are blocking that nerve, blocking the pain now without damaging any structures, damaging the veins or the arteries. So I hope that made sense, the intercostal nerve block, and hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.